shall we begin? My name is Tom Reese, and uh, this is my story. Well, um, I started in New York uh, in nightclubs. I worked in amateur shows, Major Bowes, Arthur Godfrey, and I did stand-up. I did impressions, you know, Cagney, Bogart, all this. And uh, I'd work on the weekends, and, uh, but I wanted to be an actor. Being from the South, um, I still was kind of, uh, I mumbled a lot. Um, then I picked up the New York accent, living in New York, you picked that New York accent up, you know. But when I first came to New York, I would say, well, how are y'all doing? And, you know, I'm going to school now, what, what's your name? And I'm from Tennessee. And they, every day in school, they beat the hell out of me. All the gangs would gang up on me. So I'd play hooky. I'd go down, uh, I'd go down to 42nd Street, and I'd go to eight or 10 movies in one day. I was driving a truck from the 7 to 11, uh, delivering sandwiches to all these offices. And then 11 o'clock, I went to my first class, 11 to 2, and then you break for lunch, and you go from 3 to 5, then you got voice addiction, you got acting from 8 to 11. So that was kind of the routine at the American Theater Wing. And um, then I get an off-Broadway, you know, part here and a part there. And then I left the American Theater Wing, I met John Cassavetti. He loved actors, he loved to help actors, and he would invite us to his house for dinner with his wife, Jenna, and we'd make the rounds after class and all the bars and everything. So we did this, I did some scenes in class. I did uh, uh, The Rainmaker, and then I did Detective Story, and Paths of Glory, the French film. Well, I did a lot of scenes, and uh, then we, we started this scene with a black girl and a, a white guy. Tony Ray was the actor. And uh, so it became uh, an improvisation, and uh, he decided to make a film out of it, Cassavetti. And he made a 16 millimeter film. We shot it on the streets of New York with no permit. We shot it in bars. One guy would go that way, the cops came, one guy would go that way, the camera, the other guy would go this way with the lights, and we'd meet back at the, back at the studio. So we were doing a fight scene on 10th Avenue in an alley about 10 o'clock at night. Six guys in a fight and uh, cops came <laughs> with their guns. And uh, somebody reported something, a murder or something. And uh, he paid off the cops and we kept shooting. <laughs> British Lions bought it um, for I don't know, not much. I think they paid 20000 or 25000 for it. And then it was re released at the Cannes Film Festival and it won one of the awards. Then it won the San Francisco Award and won an award in New York and one out here. So the film got hot. And we all owned uh, one and a half shares. I have one and a half shares of it. So over the years, you know, you get a check for 200, 300, whatever. Buena Vista owns it, Buena Vista Films, and Jenna Rollins. And so uh, we were, I kept saying, oh, I want to go out to Hollywood. And he said, no, Tom, it's not right. It's not the right time. So I said, okay. And he said, uh, so he was showing it out here. He was showing the film out here to directors and producers because he was proud of his direction and whatever. It was all improvised, handheld camera. Just you didn't have to hit your mark. You just they just follow you around, you know. And uh, so he showed it to Don Siegel, the director. You know, he is Don Siegel, Dirty Harry, you know, body snatchers, all that. So 
Siegel said to Cassavetes, uh, who is that big guy there in a the leather coat? With him? He said, that's Tom Reese. He said, well, I got, this, I'm doing this film with Elvis. He said, uh, he may be right for one of the heavies in that. So they called me over to 20th, and I went in, I met uh, Siegel, and we talked. He said, you're from New York? I said, yes. He said, well, this is a Western, you have to have, I said, well, I can do a Western accent. I don't, I don't have a New York accent. Dolores Del Rio was a big star. And I'm working with Elvis and Dolores Del Rio, my first movie. And, uh, he didn't, uh, he hadn't done any fight scenes, you know, and he had, he, he, he had karate, so his three knuckles on his right hand were dead. These three knuckles were dead from hitting boards, you know, breaking them. So he clipped me right in the jaw. And uh, I almost went out, but I, I revived and uh, whatever, and the director says, good, print it. <laughs> so the, the stuntman went over and told Elvis that he said, you know, he almost knocked Tom out. He, he came over and apologized. And he said, well, see Tom, no, he's Mr. Reese. He called me Mr. Reese. Called everybody Mr. and Ma'am, Mr. and Sir. And he said, see, I didn't feel it. I thought I missed you. I, he got me like that. So about three months later, I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a Western at Universal, and he was shooting a film. So I walked over in the set, you know, in my wardrobe, uh, the bad guy wardrobe, and I thought I'd just see if I could say hello. And he was there, and he shot the scene, cut, and he goes back to his trailer with his entourage, you know. And uh, he looked my way, and he he recognized me. He came over and said, Mr. Reese, how are you? He said, still playing the bad guy? I said, yeah, still playing the bad guy. Very friendly guy, very nice guy. That was my experience with Elvis. And then from there, I went, went on to do uh, uh, the greatest story ever told with all the stars, you know. Heston, Tilly Savalas, Max von Sydow, uh, Rodney McDowell. You know. So I was on that for a year. Shot in uh, Walweep, Utah, Page, Arizona. We were snowed in for three days. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Cassavetti hit a series at Universal called Johnny Staccato uh, with Eduardo Cianelli, and he played a jazz musician who was a private eye. Anyway, so he called me and he said, I got a part for you in the show. I said, good. And he said, we're going to shoot the exteriors in New York on 8th Avenue. Then you fly to Hollywood two days later, we do the interior at Universal. <laughs> used to kiss me, the way she held my hand, the way she looked at me, and the way she looked at me, Doc. That was before I had to leave her. And then she had three years of being alone. And I can understand, Doc. Well, then, if you can understand, what is the problem? I know. You know what, Eddie? I know what's going on. What is going on, Eddie? She's deceitful, Doc. And the dear Johns, the lies, they're all the same, Doc. Jeannie's no different. What you say is very true when based upon a sound basis. But in your case, Eddie, you believe only what you want to believe. And you believe all women are no good, giving you a prejudiced, preconceived suspicion of all women, mainly your wife. Now you have locked this hatred deep inside you. We have to find a way of releasing it. When that day comes, you'll be ready to go home. I'm ready, Doc, I'm ready now. All right, Eddie. That'll be all for today. Eddie, what would you do to your wife if you were released today? I'd kill her. 
old Vegas was a pro. He would, after two takes, he'd just look around at the camera and say, well, how many takes is this actor going to take? I'm like, God, come on. You know, he just look at, and he was a biter. If you get in front of me, he'd bite you in the ass. So uh, I knew that, and I was all, every scene I did with him, I would, hopefully, I'm not in front of him. So the director said to me, one director says, well, Tom, dismount. You see the guy lying in the road. You go over to help him, and you, you dismount and walk over to the guy. I said, well, no, then I have to get in front of Vegas. He said, well, you got to walk in front of him. I walked in front of him. He bit me in the ears. <laughs> then he'd, then I'd be sitting, I'd be sitting on the saloon stairs like this, you know, having a cup of coffee and a donut, and he's tied up here. Well, he'd just come over and take that donut and coffee right out of your mouth, this, this horse. He was a great horse. I loved him. They called me in to read for a film called Sleeper with Woody Allen uh, and directed by Woody Allen and Diane Keaton. And Woody Allen plays this, uh, I think he's he, he's in the future or something, and he's, wear, he's on this planet, and he's wearing this inflated rubber suit. And I have Diane Keaton, I'm holding her hostage, and he bounces up and... Uh, he jumps on me from behind and knocks me down, and we did the first take, and we did the second one. And on the second take, my knee hit a rock and broke my kneecap. And uh, then they said, rap, and they sent us back to the hotel, and I said, he said, you're gonna be on the seven o'clock plane back to LA, and I said, the AD, what's wrong? He said, well, we have a problem. Woody found something, a problem. I said, what is it? He said, well, you didn't know your lines. I said, I beg your pardon, I knew my lines. You're not going to recast me. I've never been replaced. Always know my lines. The uh, Far East Terrace restaurant, Chinese restaurant, right across the street from Universal. Everybody used to go in there, Raymond Burr, everybody. And uh, Sam Davis came in with Diane Carroll and some other people, and I went out to the car to get something, and I ran into him in the lobby. He was making a phone call, and he said, Hey man, he said, I loved your series, Ellery Queen. They should have never taken it off, those turkeys, they don't know what they're doing. I love that show. I said, do you recognize him? Yeah, I recognize him, man, sure. It's hard to be, yeah, very nice. That's how I met him. And you said the, the jewelry he had? Oh, he had jewelry on, I shook his hand, and uh, God, his jewelry cut into my wrist. I tested for Cool Hand Luke, uh, as a lot of other actors did. And my agent knew the director for 25 years. They were roommates in New York. He knew the director. I said, well, God, i got to get the party. He said, oh, he's a friend of his for 25 years. Well, I didn't get it. Uh, George Kennedy got it because he was bigger. Dragline was the character. He was supposed to be a bigger guy. I wasn't big enough. So I didn't get it. Then they offered me a second part. I didn't get that. And the third part, my, my agent said, no, if you don't get the lead, you don't, t you don't take any of the, we don't take any other part in this film. So I didn't get it. Robert Blake didn't get it either. Harry Dean Stanton got it, that part. And uh, that was Cool Hand Luke. Don Johnson was about 18 years old. We did the play here, then we did nine months here, we played it in uh, LA, and then uh, three months in San Francisco, and we had a matinee, Saturday matinee. And I had my, I played a cop, uh, captain of the guards in this prison, juvenile prison. So. Went out down to Chinatown to get some Chinese food, and I had my badge and my uniform underneath my top coat because it, it was cold, you know. So I'm walking down, and I saw these four Chinese kids beating up this little kid. They went over, nobody was doing anything. So I went over and said, knock it off. The guy said, hey, who do you think you are, man? Maybe the leader of the gang. I said, listen, just knock it off. Get out of here. And uh, I was just come off stage. I was kind of still in character as a cop. and. Uh, so uh, he said, no, I'm not. So I just opened my coat like this and flashed the badge. I said, get out of here, I'm going to run you in. Get out of here, punk. And, I, and they took off. <laughs> and the next day they put me in the San, San Francisco Examiner, gave me a write-up. Tom Reese actor scares off gang, something like that. <laughs> well, I got a phone call through and struck gold. You did? Where? No place you could cut it. This is a hideout deal. And you leave big footprints. You know, there's something crummy about you, Waller. Look who's talking. You ain't no angel, McCaffrey. No, I'm not. But I don't hide nothing. My hands are always on the table in plain sight. 